we're live. Welcome everybody. Today we have Therese O'Neill coming and chatting with us and I think it's going to be a really exciting interview because today we're actually going to be talking about all of the different types of professionals that there are within the finance space and we're really going to be looking at how um, you can navigate that path to actually then have um, those those people come and actually join you so let's quickly add in to raise because she is here uh, want to add her in hopefully that's worked yes exciting i think it's going to be super valuable because therese has actually been in the finance world for a really long time so she's worked with a lot of the different professionals that are there hello welcome therese how are you today i'm very well edwina lovely to join you thank you for coming on and i've just turned you up so i can hear you okay hopefully uh you can hear me all right i can and we will have... very well excellent all right well uh, I was just saying that today we're going to be talking about how somebody can actually navigate all the different professionals that are in the finance space specifically so that somebody can then actually build wealth more long term. So uh, I guess I did mention that you've been in the finance world for a little while. So I thought, you know what, why not actually just sort of start by having you kind of I guess, explain how long you've been in the industry for, but also what some of the different professionals are. Uh, and I think you're probably well versed to be able to talk to this. So go for it. <laughs> sure. Thank you. So I, well, I jokingly always say that I've been in the um, finance game since the earth was cooling, <laughs> but I say that that's over years in the finance space and of course spending um, a lot of time over like the last decade working very, very closely with mortgage brokers. Yes. Yes. So because you do predominantly work with mortgage brokers and you have worked in, in that mortgage broker space for a long time, helping different mortgage brokers, I guess, on their journey as well to being amazing mortgage brokers. Have you seen a big difference between different types of mortgage brokers? Obviously, at the core of it, um, mortgage brokers might be same, same, but also perhaps different as well. What have you seen out there? Yeah, look, it, it's true in the same way that you would say retailers are retailers. Mm -hmm. yeah? so, yes, so retailers sell a product and they sell it to the general public. They might sell it online. It might be an in-store retailer. Um, however, there is a big difference between going to Costco, uh, <laughs> retailer, for example, and then perhaps going to Tiffany & Co because I want to buy a really nice piece of jewellery. I think that that's what I would say is the difference from one broker to the next. And, um, and and I really don't believe that brokers should be generalists. Mm. I think that if your focus is helping, in your case, looking after people that want to build wealth and build a property portfolio so that they can retire from the workforce early, that is going to be a very different mortgage broker to somebody that perhaps specialises in first home buyers yep. or a mortgage that might specialise and there are a lot of them that specialise in house land packages or construction loans. They, I would be shopping around to make sure that the mortgage broker that you're choosing is somebody that is a specialist in that particular area that's a passion of yours. Yeah, and I guess it's, it's the same as there are just so many subsets of, of any industry and even if I you know, think of it slightly different and, and don't think of it in the in the finance space, but go, you could buy a big pen at a supermarket or you could buy a solid gold pen from, I don't know, Parker Brothers or whoever. You know, they're worlds apart in uh, what they do, but ultimately they both, they both write the they notes that you've got in your head on paper. <laughs> yeah, but if you got me a... A big pen as a 50th birthday present, I'd probably throw it back at you. But if you 
be a gold plated Mount Blanc pen, that would be something that I would treasure. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So uh, I guess understanding all of the different types of professions, um, what are some of the benefits, I guess, of, of working with, say, a, a financial planner to be able to really, I guess, build wealth as well as working alongside a, a mortgage broker? Because there are lots of different finance professionals out there and each has their own area. And then obviously within each of those professions, there's different areas again. Mm. But from your experience, you know, can you speak to how how a financial planner and a mortgage broker may come at the same um, wealth building exercise uh, or task in in a different way and how somebody would actually determine which one's the right way to go for them yeah look i think if you if if def definitely like wealth creation um and again with that view to having financial security or retirement from retirement early i think a financial planner is very very important and probably one of the first people that you want to go to in the process um so a financial planner i go i would look at them as your personal finance coach so that have a look at you and say okay so where are you at today so what's your financial position today what's your risk tolerance because mm. not mm. the same risk tolerance i might be a bit risk averse i might be sort of like in my 30s and go okay oh, hey, i'm happy to take a few risks because i've got a lot of time up my sleeve but if you're somebody my age like i do identify as 35 um but <laughs> Real age is probably a little bit older than that. So I'm probably not going to take as many risks given my age and given how long I've got to retirement or how long I've got to live as opposed to perhaps what my risk tolerance might be if I was in my late 20s. So a financial planner will have a look at, yes, where you're at today, what your risk tolerance is like, what your goals are, mm. and then give you a roadmap on how to... Um, and on how to achieve those financial goals over time. So I think that's the place for a financial planner. Mm -hmm. And then oftentimes in executing that plan, especially if you are somebody whose financial goals are to acquire a, a, perhaps a property portfolio over time, we don't have, you know, none of us have the, have the readies or the cash to actually buy all those properties outright for cash. And a financial planner... Um, or even an accountant perhaps might advise you that actually using all your cash to do that is probably not the wisest idea. <laughs> so get, bearing in mind that invariably you're probably going to have to have some sort of level of debt that goes mm. along um, with the execution of that strategy, then after you've got your financial plan, it's very important then that you probably then need to speak to the right mortgage broker to help you put the loan structure in place mm to achieve that as best that you can. Yeah, yeah definitely. And certainly um, there are a lot of different structures that, you, you know, how you can actually set this up. And, and a financial planner is uh, a key element if somebody is looking to be able to invest in that SMSF space. Um, you actually you have to have them uh, or an accountant to actually be able to invest in an SMSF and then, you know, obviously working with a mortgage broker. But you're right. I think um, what one of the things you just said there, which I think a lot of people disregard when it comes to looking into potentially using a financial planner, and that really is around understanding somebody's risk profile. I certainly know that I've worked with clients that have thought they want to buy an investment property and then they've gone through that process and they've then realized actually they don't have the the risk capacity to be a landlord and and that is different you know you, you need to think about these things before you necessarily step into them otherwise they can be very costly exercises and actually understanding you know where where do you personally fit in not only what are your goals are but does your risk profile help you to get to those goals as well? And I think, yeah, as, as you've said, being able to speak to a financial planner can be a great step for actually just 
working through that and understanding if that's actually the right path for somebody or is it a completely different journey and wealth path that they go on to be able to build that wealth to reach whatever those those goals are so yeah definitely another thing to add here eddie mm. is a lot of time, um if i'm embarking on that it's not just me making the decision it's not just my risk appetite that you need to consider but probably in my case i would be doing that to in conjunction with my partner or my mm. husband so I think with a planner too, I go almost like a, an independent counsellor, right, for relationships. <laughs> but they're going to sit there and go, well, Teresa's risk tolerance might be low, um, but Jason's risk tolerance might be high. So they will help you navigate some sort of work around where we're going to respect each other's risk profiles and then maybe go somewhere in sort of like the moderate risk risk approach perhaps so i think that's another thing to consider it's not just you if you're bringing somebody else along the journey mm, definitely yes and and you don't sometimes you don't know the answers that your partner has to some of those questions until somebody else asks them those questions and you discover uh, exactly what their risk profile actually actually is always always interesting correct <laughs> so for somebody that is uh, looking to you know build wealth and they are starting to look at you know what are the different finance professionals out there how do i navigate finding the right one for them what would you say is some of those key considerations that they actually should be looking at to be able to find a good fit for them well i think so let's let's presume for one moment that um so we've already talked about the financial planner and their their role in the equation and the mortgage broker and their role in the equation <laughs> if we then um, assume that investing in um buying investment properties for example, is, is a strategy that I want to pursue, then in addition to your financial planner and your mortgage broker, um, you're also going to need to speak to, if you're self-employed or running your own business, the other person that you may want to get involved is, is here is your accountant. Mm. So they so and they might make some suggestions or throw something out that say, is so should we, for example, um, in my case, do we own that property just in husband's name because he's the higher income earner or to raise you're the higher income earner? Should that property be equally owned by both of you? Should that perhaps be tenants in common? And then you need to get your, a lawyer or a conveyancer involved in helping you to structure that because if I'm the higher income earner, I might be better off and my debt is high, maximise debt, my accountant will give me that advice and it might be that I might be better off owning 80% of the property mm -hmm. and my mm -hmm. husband 20% of the property because his income may fall below perhaps, you know, might not be on the highest tax bracket. So that's an accountant. Mm -hmm. um, and an accountant might also suggest maybe you want to buy this property in the name of your business. Maybe you want to set up a family trust to do that. That's where the accountant perhaps comes by there with advice. And then once we've got that advice from the accountant, then you, the other professional that you really need to engage here is also a lawyer slash conveyancer. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, they need to go through and peruse the contract of sale. They want to have a look at the section 32. Make sure, you know, that um, that you're fully aware they can negotiate the sale um, for you that can negotiate terms and conditions of contract so that you're protected things like building inspections pest inspections subject to finance clauses so i think they're the sort of professionals that so really there's four mm. in my mind stand out as that you would want to engage um, on your wealth creation journey yeah and for somebody that has never engaged an accountant or a financial planner or a mortgage broker or a conveyancer how would you suggest that they perhaps, I want to say sanity check, the, the decision for who is the right person? And, and I ask this, I guess, perhaps of you because you have been in the industry a long time. You've seen, you know, the, the fantastic people within each of these different professions, but you've also seen the really dodgy people. And, you know, I'm pretty sure that you would know some of the red flags that people should 
being mindful of when they're actually trying to find who is the right person for uh, a, a specific individual. I mean, if I was looking for a, an accountant, you know, how would I find an appropriate accountant for me? How would I find a solicitor or a conveyancer that would be the best fit for me or, or a mortgage broker if I wasn't already one myself? But, you know, you yeah. get the idea. <laughs> um, so I think... Um very importantly here and i know this happens and we do talk a lot just generally in business about having a referral network of trusted advisors so i think one way that i would look at that if for example edwina if i was coming to you first as my mortgage broker to help with my wealth creation strategy i would expect that you who specialize in this would then say to Teresa, have you gone to see a financial planner i know this is a great idea um but i would suggest that i would imagine that you would say to me have you spoken to a financial planner you're self-employed Therese have you spoken to an accountant so um, that these people have actually verified that your dream is actually practically useful and, and perhaps tax effective for you mm -hmm. and it's going to achieve those goals and then if you said that to me and I hadn't I suppose my first go-to would be I would be asking you uh, she I didn't know that I should speak to a financial planner Edwina would you have a financial planner that you could recommend to me again because that's your specialization I would expect that you would have a number of financial planners accountants or conveyances that your clients have used in the past or that you have recommended before um, and where they have done a great job in protecting or advising your clients. So I think number one is asking if there's four professionals that you need and you've got a relationship with one, ask mm -hmm. that one for referrals about the others. Yep. I also have a look at um, Google reviews. I think it's like it, it's really, really important. I'd probably rather go with one of those professionals that has got, you know, 50, 100 Google reviews rather than a business that might only have two reviews. So we all know that, for example, mortgage brokers will shop around, they work in your best interest, they'll find you the best loan structure. But how long have they been in business? Mm. Because as we all know, there's a lot of mortgage brokers or people that start up a mortgage broking business, but 40% of them won't make it through the first two years. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I looking at first of all is have they been in business longer than two years and it's not just mortgage brokers right in general 80 percent of small businesses fail in the first two years so longevity uh google reviews uh referrals from other people and then also um and increasingly more these days follow them on social media mm. are they a fit with you like the way do you like their messaging on social do you have you reached out to them do you like their communication style At the end of the day this needs to be a very open yeah a very open and honest sharing of really important and personal financial information do i trust you do i like the way that you're talking to me or are you being really patronizing so mm -hmm. i think all of those things so the communication um style is also important um and that comes down to again edwina to a, just that personal connection mm -hmm. it's really really important and not just now it's in three years time when i'm three years into the execution of my strategy or i'm ready to buy another one are you there for me yeah or am um, i like i literally i reached out to my financial planner or accountant that was last friday i haven't heard back from them that would be extremely disappointing for me especially if i want to go to auction on the weekend mm. so i think is that um are really important and don't be afraid to ask the questions of those professionals that you're seeking to work with yeah yeah and it is i think being able to i guess yeah look at social media I mean obviously we're on social media right now um, but it is something mm -hmm. that is often overlooked because I think there's a lot of people that especially when they're new to an in industry they may not be on social media because they may not know how to explain some really complex financial um, 
complexities in a simple way and certainly on social media it really does have to be distilled right down and to be made as clear as possible and I, I certainly think some people struggle with that hopefully uh, our messaging is coming through and, and people understand the complex ideas that you know we're putting forward uh, clearly let us know if you're not <laughs> and and it is tricky it is it does take time and I guess yeah having that uh, longevity with an industry, you, you certainly see so many different elements of how something as complex as wealth building and as your finances and as mortgages are, you see so many different ways that that is, is done by different people from different situations, different stages of life even, you know, we're not in the same stage of life always as you mentioned earlier you know you identify as 35 you might not be 35 um and your risk profile is probably at the age of where you are at not of a 35 year old and, and you know taking all these things into account is incredibly important when you are going down this journey of of building wealth because those strategies will be very very different um so no i i hear what you're saying <laughs> So perhaps then um, let's move on. I've got two more questions yes, sure. for you. Um, so how do high net worth individuals find professionals that understand and help them to build but also to preserve wealth? And like I say, uh, we've perhaps discussed this a little bit already, but if you've got more to say, go for it. <laughs> Well, yeah, so I go back to saying um, referrals from trusted advisors, I think, is, going, is very, very important um, to, to you. Um, mm. And uh, referrals from other high net worth individuals as well. So, so oftentimes, so if I am a high net worth individual, perhaps I'm in, I don't know, whatever the occupation is. So maybe I'm, a, maybe, maybe I'm in IT, maybe I'm a self-employed manufacturer in Melbourne, southeast, I probably know other like-minded colleagues, um, friends or family. So I would be asking um, them if uh, if they have anybody they could recommend to me. I've already gone and spoken to you about online reviews, so that's very important. Um, an interesting statistic that I just learned earlier this morning is that on average, um, somebody, for example, if they maybe they start out, for, for example, Edwina, in following you. I probably, if I haven't dealt with you in the past, I will probably follow you for about, there about seven months online before I actually reach out to you. So these are the latest statistics for digital trends in 2024. Okay. Um, so I would, so that would be important. If I'm following you and none of your messaging is relatable of any interest to me, then you're probably not the mortgage broker I'm going to use. Yeah. There are also a lot of, um, so there would be conferences um, and, and events that might run topics where there might be a collection of all of those professionals in the one room. I think for high net worth individuals, they tend to get out and go to those sort of events where it might be a topic on building wealth through property, as an example. And then through those events and meeting other people in the room, I could then find names and referrals or recommendations to other professionals indeed they may be presenting on the day um, as again and i mentioned social media as well for me in particular um social media is very important as a value proposition to me i would be looking at any one of those professionals to see if they are generously sharing some like really great useful free tips as well and they're not going to charge me for every single thing that's just a personal preference of mine i believe in abundance yeah so that added to me if i was um for example wanting to engage a lawyer and they were going to put me on the clock for every minute and not give actually any simple advice off the cuff for free i probably wouldn't tend to go with them nor would i probably in probably either refer them to somebody else as well so those sort of things um matter to me and uh, not to discount brands that actually win awards because if you so for example if you want to be if you're a standout accountant in, for example, specialising in self-employed people and helping them to build wealth, 
is that accountant um, got any accolades or any awards that can actually social proof um, my qualifications? Because mm. again, accountants, accountants, retailers, are retailers, brokers are brokers. There's 18,000 brokers. How do I know who the best ones are? The best ones are out there have winning some sort of accolades and that is some sort of proof I think that you want to have a look at as well. Yeah. And I feel like you, you've perhaps answered my, my final question, which was actually just going to be, how should somebody actually prioritise selecting finance professionals when they are actually going out and they're trying to find finance professionals, especially when it's an industry that they've probably had very little experience dealing with it. It can be overwhelming once you start to dig into just how many finance professionals there are. And I think you have you've already touched on that it really is you know going out there and seeing who who is there who's won awards in those industries who is being able to communicate in ways that you understand and and being able to I guess provide information to you in a way that you you feel that you, you understand what the answer is to certain questions but also that you feel like if you had a question they would be able to answer it in a way that you could understand and you feel comfortable asking the question okay. as well. And that's right, right? So I want to feel comfortable in asking. I don't want you to make me feel like I'm dumb mm. because I've asked that particular question. I'm not impressed by people that flex their intellectual muscle. I'm actually more impressed by people that can communicate complex subjects in a way that I can understand. And it's not just me. I'm probably taking somebody else on the journey with me because I'm mm. coupled. Yep. So somebody that can relate to, um, to both of us. And also bearing in mind that if you're embarking on wealth creation as a high net worth individual, this is a long-term relationship. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's not transactional. <laughs> it's not just about getting that property today. It's about, okay, so where do I... So then what happens when I buy need to buy that next property? How does everything need to change? What is that? What does that go? I want a continuing conversation. Mm. Yeah. It's like a chapter book, right? Yeah. So I've started chapter one, I'm happy. But there's ten chapters to this book. And I what I don't want to do is get to chapter five, get disappointed, and don't know the end of the story and gotta start another book. So I think that's also important. So I want to know too. And again, this goes back to, as I said before, making sure the financial professional that you're dealing with has probably been in business more than two to three years. Yeah. Because if they've been in business for eight or they've been in business for 10, the likelihood is they're going to be around for another eight to 10 years as well. Yeah. So and certainly that they will have seen more of the cycles that actually happen with finance as well. You know, everybody, you know, we might focus individually on what happens in the next two to three years but when you you know pull back there are there are cycles that are constantly happening in the finance world and in the property space and having somebody along the ride and, and guiding you through that that's been through those cycles is going to have different insights and different knowledge to be able to help guide you through that as you're you're making your way because you're right it is a it's a long-term journey you know we don't enter the workforce and you know, work for 10 years and that's it. We're in it for a very long time and we need to make the most of it while we are actually just in the workforce and, and earning as much as we possibly can. And certainly even in that, you know, you get to certain stages in life where you're hitting those those peak income periods and, and it's worth making sure that you're, you're actually maximising what you do with those funds during that particular period so that as you move on to the next phase, you're ready for it. So, yeah, this yes of things that I just want to add yep. um, to that. And that is, don't be afraid to ask that professional if there is client, it, it, do they have somebody that you could talk to? So have they had a past client that's embarked on wealth creation through them using it, using a trust structure? So is there a client that they could um, perhaps have a chat to, to talk about your services? Same with the mortgage broker. Yes, I know there's Google reviews and yes, I know that client testimonials but I think if you're proud of the work that you do and you feel really satisfied that you really add value and have helped people there should be no reason that you wouldn't go 
look, yes, I can. There, there is another couple of people that live in your area or that I helped recently. Let me reach out to them. Mm. And, um, and if they're okay, I'm happy to put you in touch. I think don't be afraid to ask for that. Mm. I think that's really super important. Mm. Yeah. And I think being able to foster that, I guess, that, that culture and the community of, you know, we are all in this together. You know, it, it, I think that's important and, and people prefer that. But maybe that's just the world that I live in. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for joining me, Therese. It was lovely to have you and to hear your answers on, you know, how people can actually navigate all the different finance professionals to be able to build wealth. And hope you enjoy your day and I will see you again soon, no doubt. See you soon, Betty. See everybody. <laughs>